Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm actually making a video specifically showing you guys how I use Sellerboard. So I'm going to show you every single feature that I use specifically on Sellerboard. I mainly use it to track profit obviously and to track our expenses. I actually did that manually when we first started. So for the first like three months of my business, I was actually doing all of that manually just on a spreadsheet. And honestly, it was the most time consuming, like useless work that I was doing ever. So having a way to kind of automate it through Sellerboard makes everything much easier. So obviously those are the main ways that we use it, but I also heavily use Sellerboard to help restock products. So this helps us be able to maintain inventory levels and without Sellerboard, honestly, I don't know how I would do it. So I'm going to show you guys the main features and functions that I use. All right, so let's jump straight into the video. So I've been using Sellerboard for about three years now. I started using it about three months into my business so again I was doing everything manually for the first couple of months and then I was like you know what let me try a software to help me do this because as you start selling more and more and more it just becomes too complicated to do everything yourself so you need to start using softwares to really just help you automate some of these processes otherwise you're going to be spending all of your valuable time doing stupid tedious work that a software could easily do for you so I'm actually using my old seller board account so me and my boyfriend used to have two separate seller boards we used to have two Two separate Amazon accounts. We decided to merge everything. We thought that it made more sense for us to just focus on one account. We just thought that like as a unit our business would be able to blossom even more since we're doing everything together anyways on two separate accounts. Like why not merge it and build one giant business? So that's the goal that we are working on building right now. So basically this is my old seller board account. It's been about one year since we've merged everything. So this is my old account. I'd no longer use it. So I'm going to use this account to show you guys how everything works. All right, so I'm going to go through all of the features that I specifically use. Number one, we're going to start on the dashboard. So this is obviously one of the main screens that we're going to be looking at. If you've noticed, everybody in the Amazon game has started using Sellerboard. I'm so proud and happy for them because when we first started using Sellerboard, it was super low key, like nobody really knew about Sellerboard. Everyone was using Inventory Labs, but Inventory Labs is not available for Canadians. So we were never able to actually try it. And then that's where Sellerboard came in and we were like, you know what? This this software does literally everything. They honestly have such great values. Like I actually met with the team. I have another YouTube video where one of their team members was showing me every single feature that Sellerboard has. He even told me some exclusive information of upcoming features that are going to be coming to their platform. They just care so much about making this platform like incredibly valuable for such a fair price and there's not really any other software that has this much value packed into it specifically for like profit calculation and stuff like that that is as fairly priced as Sellerboard is and my values really align with them so I really just adore them as a company and obviously we've been working with them for three years so your dashboard is basically where you can view your net profit your refunds your orders etc it's basically like instead of looking at your amazon seller central app to see your sales you can open up sellerboard they also have an app if you guys want to download their app it's a little app like this it's essentially the same thing and you'll be able to see your dashboard fully on the application so basically instead of looking at amazon seller central i actually don't really open up amazon seller central anymore i actually use sellerboard a lot more because i can actually see the breakdown of profit and everything that's actually going through the account. So for example, if you made $1,000 of sales today, you'd be able to press on more. You'd be able to see a complete breakdown. You'd be able to see how many sales you made. If ever you have PPC or whatever, you can see a breakdown of that as well. You would also be able to see how many units you sold that day. You would also be able to see if you have any refunds. The seller board actually inputs everything. So the Amazon fees are included. Any fee that you're paying through Amazon directly is going to be automatically inputted through Sellerboard. So you don't need to input any of this information manually. The only thing that you need to put manually is your cost of goods. So I'm gonna show you guys where you can do that later on. It's on one of the other tabs. But basically the only thing that you need to input manually is your cost of goods and any expenses that you're paying for outside of Amazon. So if you're paying for Sellerboard, Keepa, SellerAmp, etc., you do need to list those separately as expenses. I'll show you guys how to do that later on in the expense tab. So here you would be able to see your refunds, how many Amazon fees you're paying for that amount of sales, your cost of goods for that day, the gross profit minus any expenses, which would then leave you with your net profit. You would also be able to see like what was the profit margin for that day, what was the ROI. This is very, very, very important. It is so important to be able to see the breakdown of these numbers just so that you can understand where your business stands financially. If you're selling a bunch of sales all the time, but your profit margin is only like 1% or 2%, it's like you definitely 
definitely need to increase those margins. All right, so other than the day-to-day -day breakdown, you can also see like your yesterday sales. You can see a week ago, you can see 14 days ago, 30 days ago. You can also do like a custom range or like two months ago, you can select different ranges. You can also search by a certain product. So if you wanna see like how much net profit you made for one specific product, you can click on that product and then you can see the complete breakdown for that individual product of how much net profit you've made overall. This can help with your decision-making of whether or not you should restock a product. So what I do almost every single day when I'm restocking our inventory, I'll look over here, I'll usually look at a breakdown of the last 30 days or the last like two months and just see which products have sold, how many units have sold, how much total net profit there is and what's the profit margin. And if ever I see that the profit margin is really low, like if it's below 5%, I don't think I would bother. And if the net profit was really low, then obviously I wouldn't restock it either. If there's a super high return rate, so you can actually see your return rate over here, it's like a percentage right here. If ever it's really high, I'm not sure of an, of an exact number that makes it high, but we've had scenarios where like we're selling a product, the product has sold multiple units, but then we have a couple of refunds for that product and that causes us to just not make any profit from that product because of the deductions from the refunds. So I think this is a good tool to be able to see if a product is worth it and some listings it's like the reason why it's getting refunded is because the listing might be misleading. Maybe people think they're getting more than they are actually getting. There's a lot of different reasons, but if that's the case, typically you'll see a trend in that scenario. If a lot of customers are unhappy and it's misleading for a lot of different people, there's going to be a high return rate. And so Sellerboard will be a great tool to be able to kind of manage this and to understand if it's worth it or not to restock it in the future. Because I don't have any inventory in stock on my old Amazon account anymore, I can't really show you guys this feature, but Sellerboard has a tab called order items where it will basically show you a breakdown of the items that they recommend for you to restock. Also on the main page like when you're looking at the breakdown of all the products that you sold, the profit, if ever you have zero products in stock it's going to be red which will indicate that you should probably restock this product. And so again I think the best and most valuable tool is the restocking features and without Sellerboard like I don't know how we would be able to manage our restocking and it just really breaks it down super easily for you. It lets you know which products need to be restocked. It also gives you like an estimation of how how many days it's going to take for the items to sell like it basically builds up data based on your previous sales for that product to give you a somewhat accurate estimation of how many units you should order how many more days left of stock etc and this is extremely helpful when trying to maintain our inventory levels and this is so important because if your products are out of stock you're missing out on so many potential sales so this again is probably the best tool and my most favorite thing about seller board all right so the next section i'm going to show you is products so this is how the products page looks these are some of the old products that i was selling and so this is where you're going to input all of your cost of goods so if you guys watch my inventory tracking youtube video where i show you guys how to track your inventory there's a section where i make you guys add a column to be able to track your cost of goods. This is basically the price per unit. So these are the prices that I was paying for each individual unit. And so you're going to need to input this information so that seller board can calculate your true net profit. And so basically, if you have a proper inventory tracking spreadsheet where you track all of your cost of goods, this information should be very easily retrievable from your spreadsheet. So we actually have an assistant and she goes and pulls up all of the cost of goods from our spreadsheet, adds them all to seller board. And so seller board actually added this feature called constant or by period slash batch. For example, so if ever you're purchasing this product at $15, but then the next time you purchase it, you're paying a different price. So what you can do is you can add another period or batch. So you would do add new period. You can basically put the date of when that item was received. So you just have to keep track of this through your Amazon shipments. So for example, let's say I have this product that arrived to Amazon on the 25th, I would put add. And obviously you want to always account for the remainder of the stock from the previous batch. So let's say for example, over here I have 10 units and then I have another 10 units over here. You wanna make sure that it's accounting for those 10 units from the previous ones. Like if you only sold five units of this batch, so you still have another five units available, you don't want them to be putting the price at $15 if the price is still going to be the old price for the last five units that still haven't sold. So anyways, this is basically how you can do that. So you can do old batch has five units, new batch has 10 units. So that's kind of how you would do it. You can press save. All of that will be inputted automatically for you. You just have to keep track of every single time you purchase it. We actually don't do it this way. The reason why I'm showing it is because I do know some people who do it this way, but we actually struggled with finding a solution for this, like because the cost of goods are always different when you're restocking, depending on what store you're buying it 
it from, the price is going to change all the time. So what we actually do is we have a table built into our spreadsheet where we can basically just search up the product. So we have our assistant who does this for us. So for example, if she's going to be adjusting the cost of goods for this product because we just placed an order, what she will do is she's going to go through every single time we've ever purchased this item and then she's going to retrieve. Well, basically our spreadsheet calculates it for us automatically. And so she'll basically just go and retrieve the average based on the amount of units we bought and then plug that in. So we actually spoke to some accountants to try to figure out like what's the correct way to do this. And a lot of them had recommended that we just take the average cost over all of the units. So again, we have our spreadsheet. This is built into our spreadsheet that kind of calculates this for us. And then we just have our assistant adjust the average cost of goods every single time we purchase it. All right, guys. So the next page is going to be your expense sheet. So this is actually where you can add all of your expenses that you're paying for outside of Amazon. So you can do, it's really cool. You can do one-time expenses daily, weekly, um, annually, etc. So if you're paying for Keepa, for example, we pay for it annually. So you would do like annually, you would do Keepa category, you would do like softwares, product. So you can actually like if you're doing advertising costs, like let's say you're doing private label, like this is mainly for private label, but let's say you're paying for specific ads or specific like marketing for a specific product, you could do it like advertising costs, add a specific product, but we don't really do that with online arbitrage. Or for example, if you're paying like an additional shipping charge with a wholesaler or something for like specific wholesale products you could do like one-time cost you could do like wholesale shipping and the reason why i'm mentioning this is because we do have uh, a large wholesale shipping amount that were that we just paid for for some of our new wholesale products and so we were trying to see like how can we input this cost like specifically for those units and so this is how you would do it you would do one-time wholesale shipping over here you could write like shipping then you would do specifically for those wholesale products and so that way those shipping costs will be deducted from those specific products and so it will be a little bit more accurate to help you understand if it's worth it to restock those products including that shipping cost and so if you want to do recurring you can do keepa annually softwares then you can just add the amount so keep us like 19 euros a month i'd have to check the exact canadian conversion but that's essentially what you can do and then you can do the same thing for seller board so you would do annually select category softwares etc so this is essentially how we track all of our expenses it's all going to be deducted from your sales which will give you your true net profit so if you're not using seller board right away i would definitely recommend to track this elsewhere from the beginning because you can always go back and input these older expenses so if you started in july you can always go back and still add the old expenses that were purchased previously and that way all of your numbers will be as accurate as possible and guys so honestly these are the main features that we use for seller board when i had a meeting with one of the seller board team members he showed me a bunch of other stuff that you can do but this is essentially the main things if you want to use seller board for profit purposes and for tracking your expenses and for managing your inventory level slash restocking if you want to look at some of their other features they have some features where you can send out reviews requests they have money back which is basically like if ever you're missing inventory from amazon if they lose your inventory you can request back refunds for those products through their service right here they have a bunch of other features as well but if you guys want to see a full in-depth tutorial of like every single feature you can check out the video that i did with one of the seller board team members he was honestly so sweet and amazing so definitely check out that video but these are the main features that i specifically use seller board for and this software has helped us so much with our business so I would highly, highly, highly recommend to set it up. If you guys want to try it out for free, I have a two month free trial that I can share with you guys. So just click on the link. I'm going to put it in the description and you guys can test out Sellerboard for free for the next two months. There are literally no other companies that offer a free trial for this long. So I would definitely take advantage while you can. And yeah, I hope this video was helpful. If you guys have any questions or any issues, you can always leave a comment on this video and I will get back to you. And so if you found this video helpful, please leave me a thumbs up and if you want to see more amazon content coming soon please subscribe to my channel and i will see you guys in the next video